Hello there, and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on multi-rate signal processing. This is a course offered by Professor Schula at the Humanau University of Technology. I am Renato, the instructor for these online materials, and on this notebook we continue talking about polyphase representation. So let's get started. Last time we saw how to obtain the polyphase representation for the filtering and downsampling operation of one filter. We now extend this formulation for a bank of n filters. Here we not only have one filter but n filters in our analysis filter bank and hence we can assemble the n filter outputs or n subbands into a vector of n elements given here. We also now have n filters instead of one filter, and we assemble the polyphase vectors of our filters into a matrix in which each column corresponds to an analysis filter. So we have this matrix here, and then we have each element of this matrix given by this equation here. So this matrix of polynomials now contains all our n impulse responses for our analysis filter bank, just like in our block transform case, but with arbitrarily long filters. Unlike our transform case, here we now have Z transforms, or polynomials in Z, as our matrix entries. This now enables us to write the filtering and downsampling operations of our entire analysis filter bank as a simple multiplication using the above polyphase matrix. And this is a very important result. Mathematically, this looks similar to the block transform case, but with Z transforms. Observe that this equation now contains all the samples of our input signal and also our subband signals and our impulse responses because we use the Z transform signals. The Z transform converts a potentially infinite sequence into just a scalar or an element, its Z-transform, which can be seen as a one by one matrix. The Z-transform of the sequence is one big polynomial. All the input samples are in vector X of C. This is important because it allows us to use longer filters than just one block, longer than with the block transforms. Observe that for an implementation, we can write the polyphase matrix as a polynomial of matrix, matrices HM. So we have our polyphase matrix as a polynomial of matrices HM, where the elements of the nth row and the kth column of HM are given here. In Python, the exponent M would appear as a third dimension or as a slices of matrices even here. In conclusion, we can write the entire analysis filter bank with its n filters and DAO samplers by n with a size n by n polyphase matrix H of C, which is multiplied by the polyphase vector of the signal X of C. Now we move to the synthesis filter bank. Just as for the block transform case, we can also get a corresponding formulation for the synthesis filter bank. For the, filters, for the synthesis filter bank, we can now also write the reconstructed sequence x hat of n in terms of blocks with index m and phases n and obtain the synthesis upsampling and convolution as we've seen before in the previous lecture. That's given by equation number eight. And we have it here with some still to be determined g uh, k. We can now use vectors for our sequences of blocks to simplify this equation using a vector of, for our reconstructed signal and for our k synthesis filters. And we start again with looking at just one filter. So what we're doing here is uh, we're using vectors for sequences of blocks and vector for um, our reconstructed signal and for our cave synthesis filter. Now we can rewrite our synthesis equation as given here 
where L is the length of the synthesis filters. So the inner sum is a convolution where we now no longer have our phase index N because we now have output blocks instead of samples. So we can turn the convolution into a multiplication using the Z transform. And this is what we're doing here. And now we can extend this notation to our bank of N synthesis filters using our subband vector YZ and the synthesis polyphase matrix. Since the output is the sum of all subbands, we obtain our polyphase matrix by collecting all, all our polyphase, in this case, uh, row vectors of our synthesis filters G, K of C into a matrix such that the outer sum of the above equation turns into a matrix multiplication. So we have this here and where each row of G of C now contains one synthesis filter. And this is the synthesis polyphase matrix. Observe that for this polyphase matrix, the indices for the subbands K and for the phase, phase N are in reverse order when compared to the analysis polyphase matrix that we've seen before. In conclusion, again, we turned the mathematically very complex operation of upsampling and synthesis filtering into a mathematically very simple operation with the multiplication of the subband vector with the polyphase matrix, and we have here our reconstructed signal. Our goal is to obtain perfect reconstruction. Perfect reconstruction is defined as a reconstructed signal which is identical to the original signal except for a delay. So here we have our reconstructed signal and we have the original signal with a delay. In this case, ND uh, is this delay at the original sampling rate. This delay usually results from our filtering and the downsampling and upsampling operations. So to obtain perfect reconstruction, we can simply take a look at the output of our synthesis filter bank. The structure of the polyphase analysis and synthesis filter bank can be seen also in the following picture. So here we have our original input signal. We have here this uh, delay of z to the power of minus one. We have downsampling. We have a transfer function or, or filtering. And then we will have the output and then it goes to the synthesis filter. Then we have upsampling with delays and we have our reconstructed um, signal. So the structure of the delays and downsamplers on the left of the analysis polyphase matrix, it's converting a sequence of samples at high sampling rate into a sequence of blocks at the low sampling rate. And it's called blocking. And this is what our Python function x to polyphase is doing. Conversely, the structure to the right of the synthesis polyphase matrix converts a sequence of blocks at the low sampling rate into a sequence of samples at the high sampling rate. And it's called deblocking. And this is what our function polyphase to x is doing. And here we can see that we will obtain perfect reconstruction if we have the synthesis polyphase matrix as the inverse of the analysis polyphase times a delay by D blocks. So here we have the inverse of the analysis polyphase and we have a delay of D blocks. And where D here is the delay at the downsampled rate. This is basically again like in our block transform case. And this is now the constraint for obtaining perfect reconstruction. The question is, how do we obtain filters for perfect reconstruction? How do we invert a polyphase matrix containing the polynomials? And how do we get good synthesis filters? A simple approach is analog to the orthogonal block transform matrices, where the inverse is simply the transpose matrix. There, the analysis and synthesis filters are identical, except for the time reversal for the analysis filters. 
the corresponding property of polyphase matrices is called para-unitary. And you can see more in this reference here, multi rate systems and filter banks. And it's defined by this equation here. So the transposition is the case for real valued coefficients in the polyphase matrix. Otherwise, we need conjugate transposition for the coefficients. This definition is very similar to the definition of orthonormal matrices, except that we have the z to the power of minus 1 on the right-hand side, and that corresponds to a time reversal. The advantage, or rather one of its advantages of a polyphase matrix with this property is that we don't need to explicitly compute its inverse. We just need to transpose it and replace all z's by z to the power of minus 1. Observe, if our polynomials in the polyphase matrix only have zeroth order, only constant, no z, only z to the power of 0, which is equal to 1, then the polyphase matrix is identical to the transform matrix, for instance, in the case of our DCT4. And we obtain the simple case if our filters are no longer than n and they fit into one block.